And as we speak, the cabinet has approved the all-important real estate uh, regulator bill. That's the big story that is breaking right here on uh, Magic Bricks. Now, the real estate regulatory bill, which has been, uh, you know, a part, uh, waiting to be passed both from the uh, side of the home buyer as well as the industry, it's finally got the okay in the cabinet. And I, for that, to discuss that and take that forward, I have with me Magic Bricks now's editor, Faye D'Souza. Thank you so much for being with us here, Faye. Big relief, big relief for just about everybody, every single party concerned, right? This is it, this is something that we've been waiting for for a very, very long time, Krishna. And as home buyers, this makes a massive difference to all of us. Finally, a regulator who will manage this massive buy because we have regulators now for uh, you know for the phone industry. We have regulators for insurance, for mutual funds, for stocks. A buy that costs one crore rupees on an average finally now has a regulator. So the fact that the cabinet has approved the regulatory uh, authority, we of course are going to wait for details from Delhi to see if any changes were made on the, uh, you know, on, on the proposal before it's being tabled in parliament. We're expecting it to be tabled in parliament very shortly. We know that, uh, you know, the, the regulator, just to take you through what sort of, uh, you know, regulation this will be, the regulator will be able to frame, get put together a framework. The regulator will create a system where uh, all projects that are launched will have to be listed on a website where information will be easily available. The regulator will maintain records on projects, promoters, on agents. Remember, brokers will also come under this regulator. So it's a very, very big deal. All of these things will be regulated. Or you'll be able to, just putting it very, very, very simply, you'll be able to, as a customer, go online and check on the website whether the building you are buying has its requisite permissions, whether the building you are buying, uh, you know, is, is from a builder of reputation. If there's any complaint, against that uh, builder that will also be available on the website. These are all things we're hearing. There was also, uh, you know, some suggestion of a three-year term of imprisonment if the builder fails to follow the rules. Now, we want to know, we're going to watch and see if that continues, if it remains in the proposal that's being tabled uh, in the bill, that's being tabled in Parliament over the next couple of days. We, uh, like it's on your screen right now, the real estate regulator will maintain a database of violators who do not follow their rules. This database will be available to you and me as customers. We'll be able to go online and see what the reputation of your builder is, if he's paid all of his dues, if uh, there's been any sort of complaint about him in the past, the registration, if, if, the, you know, if the problem continues, the registration could be cancelled. We've also heard that the punishment uh, ranges from a fine to a cancellation of registration to also perhaps a three year, up to three year imprisonment. Now all of these things, of course, we'll have to see how it goes. One of the things that's, that's also really important is uh, the fact that the builders and the buyers will have uniform compensation. As it stands right now, if there is a delay on the builder's part, the compensation is not the same as if there were a delay on the buyer's part. All right, uh, Faith, uh, that is like the best perspective you can get on how important and crucial this particular bill is and to get an industry perspective we are being joined by Naveen Raheja on the phone line of Raheja Olympus. Naveen Raheja thank you so much for joining us here live as this uh, uh, news is breaking. Naveen uh, talk to us this is big relief uh, for the industry as well right apart from the home buyers. Yes this is a great step because what we think is you know uh, consumer confidence in the market has actually lately gone uh, with the nose dive because of uh, projects getting delayed because of a lot of uh, projects getting misrepresented and a lot of projects coming without clearances also. So this is a, this is a, at least this will put some confidence in the customers that there is somebody to listen to their problems. Mr. Raheja, this is Faye D'Souza of Magic Bricks Now. I want to ask you a very quick question. There was a lot of, uh, you know, unhappiness in the industry also about certain points that were tabled initially in, uh, you know, in the RERA bill. The fact that there is a three-year imprisonment, the fact that uh, people who are handing out the permissions at local government are not brought under the purview of the bill. Uh, we know that these things were not considered, changes were not made by the government. Are you a little disappointed? Is industry disappointed that those changes were not made? See, if the bill comes uh, the way like uh, the way it is, uh, uh, we we only know the real estate industry in the country is going to close down because because here we have to go for more than 40, 50 tables and clearances before a project is launched, and we are being made the scapegoat for the delay, 
and those authorities and agencies which delay on giving clearances or who come in between with their some with some novel demand or novel requirement uh, just just to uh, just to stall the project so that their benefit you know they can uh, so that they can they can benefit out of it so those people if they are not brought into this bill and they are not made accountable with timelines and if there is no single window clearance and after the clearance if there is still ambiguity that somebody can come and put their uh, their uh, uh, spanner into it like you know we see the cases of uh, nature conservation zone being declared after the project has all uh, projects have all, almost been constructed these kind of things when they come and they stop your construction is stopped your water is stopped in between mm -hmm. water supplies are stopped all these things ultimately are uh, uh, should should be taken care of at the time of giving permissions you cannot do it when you the money has been invested into the project it is a hard earned money by thousands and thousands of customers absolutely mr Raja. you cannot come in between and uh, in between and uh, put, put put your conditions that this is not there and this Ab is not there absolutely mr are you sleeping at the time when the permissions were being given right. Right. Absolutely. Good. Mr. Raja, please hold on to your thoughts. Uh, Faye, uh, we're also bringing in uh, um, Arun Nanda of Mahindra Life Space who's joining us on the phone line uh, on this big breaking story right here on Magic Mix. Now, Mr. Nanda, thank you so much for joining us here. As this big story is breaking, huge relief just for the home buyer and for the industry. Your take, uh, this bill in the form in which it exists right now, it's better being passed than not being passed. Would that be your take? Sorry, sorry, I didn't hear your question. Uh, Mr. Nanda, your initial reaction to the fact that we finally have the possibility of a real estate regulator because that bill has been passed in the cabinet after much deliberation. Yes, it's not the most perfect bill that we would have wanted, but the way it exists right now, would you say that it's better that this bill is passed than uh, the way it is right now? You know, it's good, uh, as Mr. Reja said, for consumer confidence. I think there were all sorts of people uh, in the industry and I think it will give comfort to a lot of uh, buyers that there is somebody who will listen to them instead of running around uh, the courts. But I had some concerns. I will answer them when you want me to. Mr. Nanda, of course, I want to know your concerns. This is Faye D'Souza. Good evening. Like Mr. Naveen Raheja was just telling us, he said that if the uh, bill moves in its current form, and I'm quoting him, and he's on the phone, he's on the line with us right now, he said the real estate industry as we know it right now in the country will close down. Because it's impossible yeah, to give, function. I'll give you two, three reasons yes. for it. Yes. I, uh, I'll tell you what are my major concerns. One concern, of course, is that the people who create impediments should also be brought on the regulator and not the developer mm -hmm. uh, only. You know, because you have, if for some reason, if I have built as per plans, and there are various stages approvals, if the, uh, if the BMC or whoever is the authority does not give you approvals and you are stuck at that time or a subsequent amendment comes in like we saw in today's paper that you can't build 10 kilometers around this thing. When the person bought the land, the regulation was not there when he started. That's one. Second is, I think this 50% blanket of construction of the payment from developer going into a separate bank account is not fair because I think it should be linked to construction cost and not the selling price. Now, if you're doing a project in South Bombay, your land cost may be 60%. So at least the simplest thing, if they can't do anything else, is that you take your selling price minus land cost and say that it will be put in a separate account to be used for this project. But the developer has to, uh, if otherwise the developer gets nothing. If 50% is put into the thing, he has no rolling finance on this. All right. Well, uh, no, no I let me finish. There is yes. a third aspect to it. The third aspect is that we have sometimes seen that the regulators have become executive, uh, start taking administrative decisions, which regulators should only come in to frame the rules and make sure that if there is any default, he, he, he can take the thing. You know, we are seeing, and I don't want to name, and you know that there has been a lot of debate. There are some agencies which issue one notification every day. Now we've got bloody company secretaries and company secretaries who are every day reading notifications and trying to interpret it, how these things. You know, those sorts of things will make life very difficult because 
I have ran many businesses for Mahindra. There is not any business who comes in terms of complication anywhere near real estate business. True. You know, uh, Mr. Nanda, just for the information uh, of our viewers and for those of you who don't know, I'm just going to call out the salient features of the bill as it's being considered right now by Cabinet, applicable both for commercial and residential real estate projects. The Real Estate Regulatory Authority will also be established in all states and union territories to regulate real estate transactions, which means that there'll, there'll be one for every state. Uh, all real estate projects and agents will have to register with the authority. All registered projects will have to have details of promoter, project, layout, plan, land status, approvals, agreements, uh, contractors, architects, and structural engineering. Deposit of a specific amount in a separate bank account. This is the escrow account Mr. Nanda was just talking about. It basically means that all the money that you pay as a buyer for a specific uh, project, 50% of that has to go into an account which will only be used for the project at hand or the project in question. It also says establishment of a fast-track dispute resolution mechanism or an appellate tribunal. We knew this was coming. Civil courts jurisdiction prohibited from taking up matters defined in the bill. However, consumer court allowed to hear real estate matters. This is very, very important. We're going to bring an in industry on this because right now, if I have a problem on real estate, I can go to the consumer court. I can also file criminal complaints with the high court and finally take it up to the Supreme Court. But here it says that other civil courts jurisdiction would be prohibited from taking up matters defined in the bill. Promoters barred from changing plans and designs without the consent of consumers and provision of an appropriate government to make rules matter specified in the bill. This is what it says right now. Mr. Nanda, there is no mention, of course, like we keep saying, about the people who are handing out permissions being brought under the purview of the bill. Is this what you were expecting? Are you still disappointed? Yes, I was expecting that, you know, we live in a world where we are all interdependent on various agencies. You just can't hang one person, no? Today, for example, in Bombay, there is a total ban on sand. Now, you know, so is that a force measure or not a force measure? So, but the approvals, as Mr. Reheja said, especially in a city like Mumbai, is a nightmare. You have multiple agencies who have their own parameter, uh, parameters. The fire department looks at it differently from the building department. The building department looks at it from, the aviation department looks at it from a third point of view. True. Um, Mr. Nanda, I just want to um, come in over here. The question that's on the minds of uh, everybody who's watching us, what will happen to home prices uh, from here on with the fact that we have a regulator for the entire industry? How do you see uh, real home prices uh, for all of our viewers watching us? Um, see, look, let me divide it into two parts. There are very few developers like Mahindra's who only sell after approval. So uh, this concern that I told you was from an industry perspective, not from a Mahindra perspective. Sure. Because we, as because the brand Mahindra is involved, we do not start selling till all the approvals are in place. So that does not bother us at all. But personally, I don't think it will have an effect on price. What will happen is that the people today who are waiting on borderline that we will only buy completed flats, whether this will get completed or not. So the sales, pre-sales for other people, other than the large developers who are still able to do pre-sales, pre-sales for those people will start happening because now somebody has a comfort that if I pay five installments and my work doesn't happen, there is somebody who will force the guy to start construction. Well, I want to I want to bring in now. We also have I understand Sanjay that uh, from Kushmir Wakefield live uh, with us on on the link, and I'm also we're going to try and get Uday Vavikar to talk to us about that little angle about civil courts. But Sanjay, if given the fact that we are now seeing uh, you know the bill in its current form actually being approved by Parliament, and uh, you know we just heard Arunanda tell us what this means in terms of permissions, in terms of sale. A lot of builders now are just going to hold off on sale because if I'm not opened for sale, I don't have to register. Mm -hmm. If I don't register, I'm not being monitored. A if, if a lot of builders just move into saying, hang on, I'm only going to begin selling once I have approvals, this will actually drive up prices even further, won't it? Mr. Naveen Narheja, do you want to take that question? If you have to hold off sales until you have all your approvals in hand, will that effectively make homes more expensive? Uh, technically speaking, no, 
but but speaking from the point of view of demand and supply yes because many of the developers who were doing pre sales will get out of the market and there will be few main players who will be left out who will be complying with everything that definitely will squeeze the supply and push the price up so i am very i'm i'm very sure about it number 2 the equivalent compensation of whatever interest is charged for delay payment and the same is uh, to be charged from developer in case the construction is delayed is also going to be working as a hedging for developer and developer definitely is going to create a safety margin by adding the price in advance so that will also push up the price because although in the bill government should have taken care of that consumers are consumers and not investors developer sources money at the price at which he gets when the other customers are not paying that may be through a fund it may be through nbfc it may be through a bank so developer has to pay equivalent interest of the cost of money while the possession gets delayed the opportunity lost to the consumer is only the rental value so that should have been only the rental value but here they are going to compensate him at the sourcing of money for developer so these two are disconnects so because of that also the price of the apartments will definitely go up because apartments people customers customers will on one hand be taking benefit of appreciation and on the other hand they will like to put in money because if developer gets money at 18% now customer is also by booking an apartment entitled to 18% return so no other bank or no other fixed deposit or no savings account or no other investment instrument will give that kind of return so that gap is also going to be hedged by the developer so go to add to the cost so right, there so, are so many things yeah. which are impractical many things which are impractical many things which have been done only for appeasement purpose and for more of uh, uh, making the bill look like a uh, uh, mr mr navi rahija if i am not mistaken you are saying that this bill is just being uh, tabled in its current form just to make it seem like the government is taking a strong stand but this actually will hurt buyers more than expected um, you know i'm going to try and see if we still have uday vavikar on the phone line yes it will it will hurt the industry and ultimately the industry hurt means the ultimately hurting of the buyers all right so if the industry is hurt the buyers get hurt uh, do we have uday vavikar on the phone line we're trying to get uday vavikar in yes mr vavikar thank you so much for joining us uh, we're pleasure. looking My at pleasure. we're looking at uh, you know the the details of the uh, the bill that the cabinet has approved a couple of minutes ago mr vavikar and this one is what reminded me of you and i thought we should have you on the phone line civil courts jurisdiction prohibited from taking up matters defined in the bill however consumer court allowed to hear all real estate matters tell us what that means and how it's going to impact us as home buyers uh, uh, in fact i i am happy being an vice president of the consumer court bar association that we are replacing civil court Okay. but looking at the legal angle uh, consumer court itself is a civil remedy and uh, my simple question is are you going to bar the high courts of this country and uh, visa vis subsequently the other courts saying that only one court will be available apart from this authority i i am not very clear on this because this is something confusing that mm -hmm. you are denying legal rights at the high court because high court has sweeping powers consumer court yet do not have the complete sweeping powers of granting any writ of mandamus or going against any authorities governmental authorities uh, such as taxes or the other development authorities directly to that effect unless you make consumer protection act of course it is very strong today mm. because it has got uh, it can so, mr mr bavikar mr bavikar it yes. says that the bill will establish a fast track dispute resolution mechanism for settlement of disputes through adjudicating officers and appellate tribunal and then the next point after that talks about how civil courts jurisdiction will be prohibited from taking up the bill so this means that if i approach the appellate tribunal from within the real estate regulator i'm not happy with the decision i can't go i can't take it to high court and i can't take it to supreme court is that what it effectively means 
Uh, I really don't know who, whom they are an appellate authority on the on the jurisdiction of the authority appellate authority normally like Mada SRA the appellate authorities are always high courts. Now here if you have you know, then are you saying that only SLP will lie? We'll have mm -hmm. to be very clear on this. That means the ordinary consumer will have to go to the Supreme Court of India for asking uh, against uh, any judgment against uh, relief against the authority judgment. One question is posed. Second is consumer court, yes. That's nice that you will come to consumer courts. But it will, uh, how much infrastructure you are given to consumer courts? Even consumer courts also take average four to five years. And then you have National Commission and then Supreme Court. So, though consumer court is the fastest remedy amongst the other civil litigations, uh, I am really surprised that uh, why are we excluding the high courts? And there will be definitely, because high courts means where there is a jurisdiction of high court, Above above one crore matters. Mm -hmm. If you say civil court will be below one crore, now which of which of the flats? Right. Right. Uh, one crore. So which of which of the flats sure. in Bombay are below one crore? One, one second, Mr. Mr. Vavikar, let me let me bring in uh, Sanjay Dutt of Kushman Wakefield who joins us now. We have that link up and running. Sanjay, from what we are looking at, and you know we're looking at the the pointers that we just called out on the channel, which is how the bill has been approved by cabinet. And just to recap to you what our other guests have said so far, Mr. Uday Bhavikar, who is the Vice President of the Bar Association at Consumer Court, said, first of all, it doesn't make sense to prevent all of the other civil courts from uh, you know, dealing with real estate. Does this mean I can no longer go to high court? Also, Consumer Court doesn't have right now the infrastructure to handle the kind of uh, cases that it will see as a result of this change. Also, more importantly, Mr. Naveen Raheja, speaking to us a while ago, just said that if it goes on the way it is, real estate as we know it will close down in this country. What's your view on uh, what we're seeing happen this evening and what the cabinet has just approved? I would like to start by saying that, you know, let's step back for a minute and say this is a great initiative that the government has taken. This is an initiative that exists across all the world in all developed economies. Yes, their shapes and forms are very different. And it would have been great if the government had incorporated and included the government agencies and bodies which Mr. Nanda, Mr. Reheja have articulated. And there is no denying to that fact because that does impact the consumers who will actually receive delayed projects through the hands of the developers for no fault of developers. But at the same time, you know, this is a... Uh, economy where it, it takes time, it evolves, the solutions evolve, policies evolve. I think it's a great step. Look at the financial uh, institutions, the lenders, the investors, the institutional investors who are coming to our country and they want to invest. It's a big relief that finally there will be a regulator. It will also be a major help to the mature and seasoned developers who actually have all the right intent to deliver projects on time and meet the expectation of the customers that they have only built. And because there were no entry barriers, because just anybody and everybody could pick up some drawings and architects, illustrations and present it to the consumer and sell and then struggle to deliver, uh, was actually painting a wrong reputation. Uh, you ask any developer, you ask Kridai Body, Sanjay. one of the biggest problems the developers are facing is the perception the negative perception but, of the industry. Okay, hang on, Sanjay. Now, just to solve, you know, just to come up with that problem, across the world, there is a certification that is that, that, that professionals need in order to work in the real estate industry. Now, the regulator is not proposing a certification for any of the professionals in the real estate industry. They're just saying, register with us. Now, it's going to be a fairly long time before that results in consumer confidence coming up. It doesn't say anywhere that somebody with a drawing and a piece of land cannot become a real estate uh, you know, developer. It's not solving that particular problem that, you're, that you've just mentioned. But at the same time, uh, Faye, if, they, if this law is becoming a reality, and those speculators, developers are going to venture into a project knowing that this law is going to come into force, if not immediate basis, uh, I think they would be taking a huge risk. So I think it will have an impact on the market. The fly-by-night operators will no longer experiment uh, with the industry anymore. And the more mature and seasoned developers who actually mean well, who have financial closure on the projects and with good intention want to deliver on time, will actually be able to complete and focus on the projects. But clearly speaking, I mean, there are certain areas which need improvement. And you earlier mentioned 
uh, on the legal system, and I'm not an authority on that, but I do agree uh, here that uh, just consumer courts alone will not solve the problem. So there's lot, lots to be done uh, on this bill, but it's a great step, it's a big step, and I think we should appreciate what the government has accomplished here. All right. All right, uh, Sanjay, just hold on to your thoughts because I'm just going to go back to Arunanda of Mahindra Life Spaces on this uh, big discussion we're having on consumer redressal because that's a focus point. It's a big uh, uh, initiative as far as this particular uh, real estate regulatory bill that's been passed is concerned. Uh, 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 Mr. Nanda, you know, we've heard what the industry had to say. You've heard what uh, you know, Sanjay had to say. Uh, you know, now talk to us about this particular point of how uh, you know, the, the, the redressal mechanism that is being mentioned in this bill for consumers, how you know, it could be the civil court uh, you know, there's a restriction on where these cases can be taken up. Uh, you know, what is your view on that? See, it depends on how execution is the key in these matters. Uh, the problem that we face in uh, sometimes is that the high courts in UP, for example, the Allahabad High Court has a 20-year backlog. Now, a poor customer cannot wait for 20 years. So. Uh, it depends on how fast the things are handled and cleared. Now, I am personally indifferent to uh, the whether it is uh, civil courts or whether the regulator puts up bodies with powers. I am personally indifferent to that. Um, you know, for, look, uh, you must also uh, discount what I am saying because, you know, when you company like ours have never had any litigation with a customer so far, touch wood. So I am not worried, but I am talking from an industry perspective. Mm -hmm. And look, we have to look at the consumer. If the consumer is not there, nobody is going to buy my SUVs, nobody is going to buy Club Mahindra membership, or nobody is going to buy the flats. All so right. consumer has to be given confidence. And as Sanjay said, that I think it will get, it will distinguish between the men and the boys. Um, and sure. if you are a primary student, you will not be allowed to entertain the market till you've reached certain amount of uh, maturity. Now, that's a good news for the industry. That's good news for the customer. Mr. Nanda, uh, the, the uh, you know the, the the notes that we've received right now, coming straight out of uh, out of that meeting, don't include the three-year imprisonment that was mentioned some time ago. But there's no reason for us to believe that that has not been included in the bill. What is your response uh, to a couple of the things that were in, in, included in the bill? One was the possibility that the government might deregister a builder, take over his project, and then consider a three-year imprisonment for not following the rules. Do you think that's, uh, you know, that's pro-buyer, anti-industry, or just not fairly thought out? You know, these things have been misused in the past, honest people. My problem, as you talk, I'll, I'll have difficulty finding CEOs and senior people to run the business. Because nobody wants to go to jail for some big wins and fancies of some, uh, the, what, what we call activist uh, judges mm -hmm. and lawyers. Mm -hmm. Now, so I personally feel it's a civil issue and the punishment should be civil and not, it's not a criminal case unless the issue of fraud intent, as you know, is established. Sure. There are two aces that, you know, the criminality of it um, and the criminal law that you can only find somebody for uh, in a criminal situation if there was a criminal breach. Sure. Not because if there was a, uh, uh, you know, somebody had an issue and sand was not available and he delayed, you can't send somebody to jail. So there has to be an intent to defraud must be established. I'm uh, trying to find the word in, which is there in the criminal code that uh, I'm not getting it just now. There's a word there in the criminal code that unless there is that, yes, you cannot criminally prosecute somebody. All right. Um, I, I'm going to bring in Uday Vavikar here because Uday Vavikar will definitely know that uh, that word in uh, in the criminal court that <laughs> says unless you can establish uh, an intent for malice. Is that what it is, uh, Uday Vavikar? What should be the difference really between a criminal and a civil prosecution? Whether there is a mens rea and uh, whether there there was a criminal intent yes. in terms of uh, the this thing, but uh, we are not on that issue. We are on the issue for non-compliance of the order. Three mm -hmm. years imprisonment anyway is there under Section 27 in Consumer Protection Act for mm -hmm. non-compliances of the order, and that has put fear to the builders. And uh, and uh, we have seen results very fast. Somewhere there has to be a penal provision. Otherwise, we'll keep fighting in civil litigation. There'll be no end. Mm -hmm. Apart from that fact, I am also coming to another fact, why there is no registration of builders. 
right. in fact we had recommended to select committee that there has to be like stock market accredited builders they have to be registration of builders so you get proper good builders with a good background accredited background and they are liable and accountable there is no question of the registration of one company they can start three companies so therefore uh, there is no question of registration you will register the project but you are not registering the builder so that has had to be think thought over i think parliament can think over on this and you know uh, i i want i, I want to ask a very quick question to sanjay that if we still have him sanjay if you're still with us uh, you know i want to react to what arunanda said separating the men sure. from the boys here with this uh, regulator from uh, let, let's look at it from the customer's point of view right now if i come into the market i have a lot of choices there's a wide range of prices as well within the same neighborhood and the biggest fear we found out is the problem of mistrust in this industry that the customer doesn't know whom to trust and it's a long period of 5 or 6 years to actually wait for the final product so tell me from a customer's point of view how this helps out and if we do see that sort of consolidation happen in the market and the men get separated from the boys will we see a slimmer more efficient industry going forward I definitely believe that this industry will go uh, miles ahead with this bill and clearly because if you look at our environment the cost to capital is so high whether it's developer or actually consumer the consumer also puts up its own 20% of capital down when they book the apartment and imagine if it's a 4 or 5 crore rupees apartment all that capital is down and if they have to wait for 5 or 6 years to even see the building come up from the ground is actually can hurt some people uh, and certainly many people who actually uh, have put their lifetime savings into it so clearly uh, all those developers uh, will have to now uh, be accountable for all such wrong doings and delays and that's a big comfort the customer will draw i also believe that the the whole industry i mean i i, I can now take you into uh, you know various land owners who have done joint ventures with developers for example and joint ventures have been done on the basis of some deposits and some mou sign that we will do approvals and by the way those approvals being waited for last 5 or 6 years nothing has really happened in the meanwhile the developer has gone ahead and raised some money on that property which is not owned by them and actually third party interests of consumers have also been established on the property and and you have lots of these problems across the country all that all those issues uh, which go to the court all the time and create problems for our court as well because you can't give justice to all of them in one go uh, will stop or will actually reduce and over a period of time probably will be able to eliminate those so this will really bring lot more confidence in the sector the consumer who actually wants to invest or wants to live will come forward willingly the day it is launched knowing that all the other parameters of approval are in place that there is there is some authority who is protect their interest and there is a redressal system and, and therefore going forward they will not be subjected to any harassment uh, you know competition commission of india for example came out very strongly on certain builders because they found the contracts were very biased and one sided i think some of these decisions uh, or reforms that have come through are quite landmark and i think it will have a huge impact on this country especially where the people are quite poor they can't afford uh, to fight on their own and who will fight with large developers from their point of view but while this is one side of the story uh, can we really make uh, certain provisions uh, in this act which will allow uh, certain government bodies and departments to also come in and make them accountable that's something that we should really think about and and contest uh, as we go further All right, uh, Sanjay. Um, I'm just going to uh, start uh, getting closing comments uh, on this big story, the big discussion we're having over here. Simple question to you, Sanjay: Are we better with this bill? Uh, you know, coming from the point of view of the home buyer, or are we better without it? Because you know, the way this bill, the, the salient features that uh, that we've told people about, we've just been, that we just found out. Uh, one quick comment, final comments from you: Are we better with this bill, or better without it? we are much better with this bill and i'm glad it happened we are definitely going to see things improve all right uh, same question to uh, uday bavikar as well if you still have the phone uday krishna here from the magic krishna studio are we better with this bill or better without this bill 
I think we are better. It's the beginning, but I would say woods are lovely, dark and deep, and we have promises to keep and miles to go before we sleep. A lot of things have to be done. It has to be improvised. Brainstorming has to be done, and a very effective bill where national uh, you can have a national control. Otherwise, each state will have different bills, and then this bill will have no value. Therefore, uniformity is also one of the criteria has to be remembered. And uh, Mr. Arun Nanda, sir. better with this bill for this country as a whole or better without this no i think regulation is better but regulators should remain regulators you know and you cannot take one satyam example and then measure everybody by that yardstick and make it make doing business impossible i think that is what needs to be protected guilty has to be punished and people who live by the law should have the freedom as long as they are working within the law to operate All right, uh, Mr. Raheja, uh, we've heard your take on it quite clearly. But uh, final comments from you, uh, you know, in the interest of the nation as a whole and the, and the audience more about is watching us. Better with this bill, better without this bill. Certainly, since last this seven eight years, I have been fighting that this bill should come. But it would have been much better had it come in a more practical form. All right, uh, Fay. So that's and the... we are definitely better. We are definitely better in one respect that at least after so many years we have something which can put consumer confidence, which can make developers accountable. All right, Fay. That's the that's round the of... yeah. That's the word coming in, Krishna. Obviously, so this is welcome, a uh, welcome move from a consumer point of view. Finally, this industry, you know, has um, has someone watching over it. For consumer, will feel that someone's looking out for my interest, which is a massive, massive, uh, you know, point to bring in consumer confidence and to make the consumer feel looked after. But of course, lots of points there that will need clarity. We'll need to look at the long form and find out if there's any sort of fine print. Like Mr. Bavikar said, we'll have to look at it very carefully to find out what the government meant by each of these points, which is what we're going to. do here <laughs> on magic breaks now we're going to continue this conversation especially at 9 pm and try and find out as much as we can on what the new real estate regulator is going to be like what powers it will have and how it will help you and me as home buyers gentlemen thank you so much for joining us on the show and helping us understand this development and stay with magic breaks now